The Louisville Cardinals are back in the win column after taking down the USF Bulls 41-3 on Saturday afternoon. The Cardinals did everything they needed to do for the most part. We're going to discuss everything you need to know on today's episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I'd like to take this time to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. At this time, I want to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On, the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. So the Cardinals, the Louisville Cardinals came out on top, 41-3 to over the USF Bulls on Saturday afternoon. The Cardinals, for the most part, handled business um i'm going to discuss why this is a win that you shouldn't undersell but you shouldn't overreact to we will also kind of dive into um, how the cardinals put together their probably their most complete performance of the season thus far uh discussing the offensive and defensive production in this contest so um, before we talk about the win itself, I do want to make you all aware that I will be out of town on a sales conference, um, at a sales conference, not on a sales conference, at a sales conference this week. I will be back on Thursday, so, um, there will be an episode today and then no episodes until, um, Thursday and, and Friday, but previewing the upcoming matchup against Boston College. So I just want to let you all know that before we... Um, dove into the show, so there's no confusion. But um, this win it, in itself is, you know, it, it's the Cardinals handling business, but you shouldn't undersell it and you shouldn't overreact to it because I feel like the fan base is pretty divided in that sense. You know, it's it's very, um, it, it's very um, differentiating the stances of members of this fan base. A lot of members are in the Oh, South Florida is a team you should have beaten all along. And then there's the camp that's appreciate what Lowell is doing. They're handling business. I kind of reside in both uh, styles of thinking, but more so in the in the in the former. Um, but regardless, this isn't a win that you should undersell because the Cardinals handled business like they needed to. That is something that some teams don't do. Now, granted, you can say, well. Louisville should have won this game, and that is true, and we'll get into that here later on in this first segment, but um, overall, in terms of what Louisville was able to do in this game, how they won the game, how they controlled the game from the beginning to the end, yeah, I think that you can look at this and be appreciative of the effort, be appreciative of the performance, and, and, and be able to look at this and identify some positives to take away the Cardinals are playing better with each and every week. I know the results haven't been there through the first four weeks. And now you're at 500, but a win is a win is a win. And I will take it um, to go six and six or seven and five. You have to win six games and you have to lose six games. You have to win seven games and you have to lose five games. So uh, I think people forget that when they predict six or seven wins on the season that you have to lose five or six times. Now, granted, I am in no way making this um, a point to say that, hey, you know, Louisville should get a pass for what's happened in the first four weeks because you have to lose six, five or six games. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Um, you know, I've been as frustrated as, as everyone has uh, about um, the early season woes, but I'm just saying that, you know, it's almost like, Yes, I understand that there's not much to gain from this victory and there's everything to lose if you were to have lost, but I see a good portion of the fan base not even accepting this victory. It's like, okay, whatever, you beat South Florida. Now, there is some truth into that. There is some you know, um, truth into that style of thinking, but I think it's important to appreciate the victories because, I mean, that's kind of what this – what these seasons, what this sport is all about. You have to beat the teams you're supposed to beat, but you know, a win is a win, and that's something that you should definitely appreciate. Um, 
I'm going to go through and read some stats that uh, Keith Wynn, Keith Winnie of uh, Cardinal Chronicle. I, I need to ask Keith how to pronounce his last name. I always um, never know. But he made a Twitter thread yesterday after the game, and I thought it was very interesting. And it kind of shows you just how solid of a performance this was from Louisville. Um, USF came into the game averaging 200 plus rushing yards. U of L held them to 48, which included a 37 yard run in garbage time. That 37 yard play was the only play U of L allowed for more than 21 yards on the day. Five total quote unquote big plays allowed, which is a vast improvement from every game this year. Um, U of L allowed 2.5 yards per play, which is the lowest average allowed against an FBS opponent since 2015. Uh, they averaged 7.1 yards per play on 76 plays. The Cardinals haven't done that since 2017. And the Louisville has 32 tackles for loss through four games, the most since 2017, 13 sacks on the season, which is more, which is more than they had in the entire 2018 season. And it's the most since 2016. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I, I think that those stats kind of um, you know, epitomize the control that Louisville had over this game from start to finish. And they did what they needed to do. Um, I looked at this game and I thought, okay, you know, if you remember the Friday episode, I said Louisville will win if the Louisville Cardinals offense got out early and, and started scoring points. First quarter, it was 14-0. By halftime, they were leading 28-0. That's exactly what I was calling for. Now, obviously, on that first possession, um, you know, a, a penalty really derailed the 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 sequence. But Louisville came out and they forced South Florida out of their game early, and that was kind of the the focal point that I had going into this game. Playing an option offense was, hey, look, get this in a run dominant offense, get this team out of their comfort zone, force them to play to an identity that they're not necessarily used to, you know, getting them into more passing down situations. And the second point was eliminate or, you know, reduce big time chunk yardage plays for the South Florida offense. You saw uh, the tweet from Keith that they only allowed five such plays all game long. One of those was a garbage time play. Um, and outside of that, it was only uh, about 21 points, so, I mean, it, or, or 21 yards. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, it just kind of is what it is and um, kind of really goes into accepting what we saw on Saturday. Now, I know and not really everyone was able to, to watch the game with it being on PBS or the History Channel or wherever the hell the game was on. But, um, you know, just being able to see that type of of a performance from Will. And, and like I said, I mean, we'll talk about why you can't really overreact to it. But it, but it is nice to at least appreciate it and, and appreciate something that we've at least been kind of, um, you know, been kind of um, yearning for, so to speak. Um, the third aspect of it that Will needed to do to win this game was to eliminate the mental mistakes. Stop defeating yourself, so to speak. Um Win the turnover margin. Yeah, Louisville had a turnover, but they got a turnover back on seemingly almost the next play. The Cardinals won the turnover margin three to one. They had some costly penalties here and there, but um, I also think that um, you know they had uh, five penalties for fifty nine yards. South Florida had six for twenty five. So a little bit of improvement, but still, you know, the, there is some um, you know areas to to get better in, in that regard. Um, so it's nice to appreciate the victory, but let me say this. Do not overreact to it. And that's something that, you know, there's a very fine line. You can appreciate it, but you can also accept the fact that South Florida is probably one of, if not the worst team that you're going to face on the schedule. Um, it is a team that, you know, they gave Florida a run for their money, but they got blown out against BYU. So it's really kind of hard to to really uh, depict how good a team is in a certain amount of time. So, um, you know, Sorry. Um, yeah, but don't get too invested into this victory. It's one of those where it's like, okay, good result. Celebrate it for the moment. Get back to work. Because Louisville, the, the reality of the situation is Louisville kind of dug themselves into a hole going one and two. And this was kind of a game that you almost pretty much had to win. And you have to almost do that with the next two games on the schedule as well. So it's nice to get the victory. Um, but you have to kind of uh, have some short-term memory uh and get ready for the next game. You can't get too high, can't get too low in, in this season. Um, uh, it's also a sense that 
you know, there's a parallel that a lot of Louisville fans are making that I, I look at and I kind of understand where they're coming from. The game against Syracuse or the Syracuse Duke last year, Louisville ran all over the Blue Devils. They looked um, exceptional against Duke. Duke was one of the worst Power Five teams in football. Um, but the very next game against Kentucky, Louisville gets blown out in the Governor's Cup at home on Senior Day. So the parallel that a lot of fans are making is that, oh, don't let this performance against a very bad team or against a, a bad team affect how you see the rest of the season and affect how you see this team. I get that. I understand it. I kind of echo that sentiment in a lot of ways, but I, I think that, you know, South Florida showed in weeks prior that they can really throw a wrench in some teams' plans. Excuse me. And I think that Louisville's ability to, um, you know, check off the boxes and the stuff that they needed to do, and to it was I think it was more Louisville taking care of South Florida than South Florida is not playing all that well. I think it was a, a really a matter of Louisville doing well. Uh, but this is a game, yeah, you have a long, long season ahead. South Florida was a game that you needed to win. Um, it, yes, you saw some improvement. You saw where Louisville was, um, you know, doing some things differently. Uh, the offense kind of got kick-started, and that's really all this was, what was, was an, um, an ability to gain confidence, you know, try to boost some team morale, get back in the win column, and, and just get your mind right ahead of next week's game up in Boston. So, um, yeah, not much really to take from this other than the fact that Louisville handled business like they needed to. Um, but as I mentioned, a long season, South Florida was a game that you were supposed to win, so try not to look too much into it. You can appreciate it for what it is, but now it is time to get ready for the next game and try to build up a winning streak as you attempt to salvage the season and get closer or just a little bit closer to bowl eligibility. So um, I want to dive in a little bit into you know, what we saw from the team on both ends of the football. We'll start with the offense here in the next segment after we talk about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free, um, you can add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The offense kickstarted itself in the game against South Florida. Um, now, granted, when we talk about how good the team played on Saturday, note that they were supposed to play this good on Saturday. This was a team that they were supposed to be able to work out some of those, um, you know, um, deficiencies, so to speak, that we've seen on both ends of the football. Um, so know that when I'm talking about these things, understand that it's nice to appreciate them and it's nice to appreciate Louisville handling business, but it's also a sense that Louisville should have done this regardless. Um, offensively speaking, I thought that this was definitely the most complete game on offense that we've seen through the first four games. The Louisville rushing attack came alive, especially early on against South Florida um, on the route to or on route to 28 first half points. The Cardinals are seeming, are seemingly pushed this game out of reach at halftime. Um, 46 carries, 283 yards, and four scores for the Cardinals on the ground. 6.2 yards per carry it was a vintage game from malik cunningham cunningham nine carries 113 yards with three scores 12.6 yards per carry had the opening score of the game with the 40 yard touchdown and then had some uh some interesting plays in which he scrambled around and created something out of nothing that malik cunningham 
has shown that he can do throughout his Louisville career. Uh, as a passer, 14 of 22, 186 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions, 8.5 yards per completion, had a 99.4 quarterback rating. Uh, something that you can look at and appreciate. Now, granted, uh, some players got some garbage time minutes. Brock Doman came in and looked sharp uh, as a signal caller when his number was called. Um, but something that definitely hasn't come close to happening this season, the Cardinals had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 players receive or catch a football in this game, record a reception in this game against South Florida. Now, granted, some of these were uh, in garbage time situations, um, but it was nice to see Jalen Carter get in the end zone for the first time as a Louisville Cardinal, the former Eastern Kentucky transfer, uh, DuPont Manual High School star, and he was a walk-on before this season until he was awarded a full-ride scholarship. I was very, very um, excited to see him in the end zone um, getting his his first touchdown as a Louisville Cardinal. That definitely is something special, one of the best storylines uh, from yesterday's game. Um, but look, I think that Louisville pretty much did what they needed to do. Yes. Penalties kind of hurt here and there. I know the, the hold on the opening possession really was challenging. That pretty much stalled the drive. Um, the offensive pass interference after the Travion Cooley run down to the one yard line could have been disastrous as the Cardinals had first and goal from the 16 yard line. And then Malik Cunningham did what Malik Cunningham does. And he, scrambled and scored a touchdown on third and long at the goal line. So um, I, I think that, you know, we'll, we'll handle business. Malik Cunningham probably had his best contest of the season. It was nice to see the offense kind of get back into um, form. Travion Cooley looked solid, 11 carries for 75 yards. You had Tyon Evans, 13 for 51 and a touchdown. Jawar Jordan, 8 for 38. Um and then receiving the ball, I think that uh, you saw some guys that you usually don't see. Uh, Chris Bell had a reception for 26 yards. Maurice Turner, uh, this is going to be one that's very interesting. He had two catches for 40 yards, and he uh, got those receptions when Brock Doman was quarterback. I think people forget just how quick Maurice Turner is. Turner had uh, you know that thing in the offseason where he raced Tyree Kill and literally was step for step in front of him. I think he beat Tyree Kill. If he didn't beat him, he was right behind him. Uh, so... That true freshman is going to be somebody to watch moving forward along with Chris Bell. But overall, nice to see the offense kind of get back into its own, get back into a situation to where they, you know, were able to continue drives, um, you know, uh, convert third downs. They look solid up front. Uh, the Louisville offensive line created space and created gaps for the runners to go through. Gave time for Malik Cunningham. Now, Cunningham did have that uh, pass in the first drive that probably should have been an interception if the South Florida defender doesn't drop it. But um, I think that uh, it's also something to where, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how the team looks next week against Boston College, and that, that'll be a real indicator of, of where this team is going in terms of trajectory. But it was just nice to see this team handle a team that they were supposed to um, and just put points on the on the scoreboard. So, um, like I said, it is South Florida, so you take that with a grain of salt, but at least Louisville was able to handle business, and it definitely beats the alternative of South Florida winning this game or making it a very interesting game. So, uh, defensively speaking, though, what a performance from the Louisville defense again. Um, we're going to discuss my key takeaways defensively here in a second after I say thank you once again for making Locked On the Louisville your first to listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, including YouTube and WHAS 11 Plus, which if you don't know how to get there, WHAS 11.com. Scroll down to the sports section and you can watch all of the Locked On the Louisville podcast episodes um, five days a week, your team, every day. The defense was fantastic against South Florida. I expressed my concerns on Thursday and Friday about playing a predominantly run option team. That's where I was a little concerned because if you look back and you look at who was played in the past five years or so, yeah, 2018 was bad with Georgia Tech. 
But 2020, they still struggled against a bad Georgia Tech team. They lost to an Air Force team uh, that they probably were better than. They lost to them last year, and they looked lost at times. So I was concerned about, you know, Louisville having some tackling issues early on. I was concerned about them giving up big plays and this game kind of playing into how South Florida was wanting to, um, you know, get to the point to where they were, you know, getting chunk yards down the field and just scoring. And then Louisville was, you know, being forced to kind of answer them. That was not the case. Louisville's defense was exceptional from the opening kickoff. Um, only allowed three points, and that was, um, you know, a drive where there was some handful of penalties. But regardless, even in the second half when there when it was garbage time, Louisville didn't allow a touchdown then either. So, um, like I mentioned, uh, or like Keith mentioned. I mean, it, it was incredible to see Louisville hold South Florida to 48 yards. They took the Bulls out of their game. They forced them to throw the ball. And then when you force South Florida to throw the ball, you saw that Gary Bohannon did not look comfortable at all. Nine for 17, 62 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions, a staggering 9.7 quarterback rating. Um, Brian Bertie, Brian Bertie, after having 150 career rushing yards against, or having having a career day of 150 rushing yards against Florida, nine carries, 26 yards. That's good for 2.9 yards per carry. Um, Kwan Powell, who had eight for 45, that was mainly in the second half, and a lot of that was just on that 37 yard run. So Louisville's defense really handled the situation here. They uh, asserted themselves early on. They got into the backfield early. They forced South Florida to get in third and long situations. Sometimes they converted, but but sometimes they didn't, and that, and that was a matter of Louisville's defense really, really uh, showing up here. Um, and, and like I mentioned, forcing those turnovers as well. They had nine tackles for a loss, uh, three sacks on the afternoon on Saturday. Yaya Diaby had one. Uh, Yasir Abdullah had one, and then Quincy Riley had a sack as well. Um, but the ability to really dictate this game, they had um, the two interceptions. They also had uh, they also forced a fumble against Gary Bohannon. It was funny because what Louisville did was they intercepted a pass, and then Louisville turned it over on a tie on Evans fumble, and then two plays later, Josh Minkins Jr. intercepted a pass at the two yard line. So I was really really impressed with with how Louisville's defense. Um, you know, competed in this one. This was definitely their most consistent performance of the year, um, and they they looked pretty solid. The uh, defensive backs did solid in coverage. They bounced back. Um, Wolves defensive line did incredibly, uh, did an incredibly good job as well. And that's something to focus on. That the team had nine tackles for loss. Um, really bottled up the South Florida offense, forced them out of their game early. Like I mentioned, Louisville was scoring um, pretty quickly in the first half. I had 28 first-half points. South Florida forcing Jeff Scott's team to throw the football more, and you put uh, Gary Bohannon in a vulnerable situation to where um, when you are forcing him to throw the football more, you may end up getting some turnovers. The Cardinals win the turnover battle 3-1. to one. Sure, they had some penalties, but at the end of the day, um, I'm impressed by the performance. I'm, um, you know, I'm appreciating it. I understand that, hey, look, uh, it is South Florida, so you were supposed to handle this offense, but Florida wasn't able to. BYU did, but they still allowed South Florida to score the football. Um, now, granted, who knows how good Florida is? Um, they gave Tennessee a run for their money in in Knoxville, but then again, you, you still never know. But South Florida did that in the swamp last weekend. So, um, yeah, I mean, overall, it, it's a good win. You should appreciate the win. You should relish you know, for the for the time being, you know, for the day or so, for the day or the next day. But then you get back to work because it's a long season and this was a game that you had to win because you dropped two games that you probably maybe shouldn't have. Who knows? Syracuse is 4-0 and right now. Um, but South Florida, a team you were a 14-and-a-half point favorite against, uh, but it was nice to see Louisville really, really handle the situation on both sides of the football um, especially the defensive end, but putting up over 40 points as well against an against a defense that was one of the bottom 30 in Power Five, uh, giving up over 440 yards per game to opponents. Louisville did a solid job um, on both sides of the football. 
Um, but yes, now the attention and the focus turns over to Boston College. Obviously, um, a, a matchup to where Louisville is looking to get back and begin a winning streak, something that um, will go a long way in trying to determine if Louisville becomes bowl eligible this season or not. Uh, but now at 2-2, two and two, you lost to Syracuse and Florida State. The next four games are going to be very critical in deciding if you will be bowl eligible. We're going to obviously discuss um, the upcoming slate uh, at the end of the week whenever I get back into town. I uh, want to say thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services. Uh, do yourself a favor, make Locked On ACC your second listen of the day. Uh, that podcast hosted by Candace Cooper does a great job of um, just overall analyzing the landscape as a whole for the rest of the conference. So be sure to check that podcast out on whatever streaming service you use. But that's going to wrap up this episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. We will see you right back here on Thursday afternoon.